Yeah, so the recording has started. Uh, we are picking up where we left off, which is really doing the finishing touches of Python drawing for now. Um, so over the past two classes, we learned how to draw things starting with lines and then rectangles, how colors work, how to fill areas in, uh, and touched on some of the other capabilities that Pygame has that we didn't go a lot uh, of depth into, such as drawing polygons or drawing um, multiple rectangles. There's a lot of draw functions that we didn't talk about in depth, but they all work very similar to the ones that we've talked about. Um, and the documentation page is always a great resource uh, for learning more about these kinds of things. Um, Today's class, uh, I will go over a little bit of review, a little bit of the homework. And then I also want to just take some time to demo and create a really basic program uh, involving drawing in a way that we haven't seen before yet. And if we have time, I will pick up uh, where we left off on talking about sound and music um, in Pygame. So that sounds good. Let me start my screen share. Oh, uh, ignore that. So I'm going to look at my code. And I'm going to start off by talking about um, a simple program I have uh, on my screen. And this isn't exactly a homework solution, because the homework solution was very open-ended. But it touches on a couple of the things that you might have um, done or uh, were the goals for this assignment. Um, so we have a lot of the same code that's in every single program. So I'm going to skim over that for now, but I'm going to go back on that for the review. Um, specifically, the part for this homework was things like um, you might have created a color. Um, you didn't have to do it this way. You can use some of the shortcuts that we've mentioned. But here's how you explicitly make a color in Pygame. Um, cyan equals pygame.color, and then you pass in three values. So here I'm passing 0, 255, 255. That means no red, a bunch of green, a bunch of blue. That turns into a cyan color, uh, kind of a neon light blue. And here I do something similar, but instead of creating a color, I'm creating a rectangle object. And we talked a lot about coordinate systems and how rectangles work. Um, for the rectangle, a rectangle is defined by four values. The top left corner, which is defined by an xy coordinate pair. So here, my rectangle starts in the top left, 0, 0. And then the next two values are not another point. It's the width and the height of the rectangle. So this rectangle has a width of 255. 255, let me actually, maybe a typo, should be 250, 250. Um, so this essentially is going to be a rectangle that covers the top left quadrant of our um, window. So if you take our window, divide it into four areas, it's the top left uh, section. And that's just because our screen size is 500 by 500. So this rectangle covers up the top left one fourth of the screen. Then uh, here's one of the draw functions that we didn't talk a lot about uh, in the previous classes, but this is how you draw a circle. And I did show an example of this, um, but it has a lot of similarities with the, all the other draw functions. You have to tell it what surface to draw on, what color to use, and then some information that's specific to the shape or the thing that you're drawing. So for a circle, what you need to tell it is where's the center of the circle and how big is the circle. So here, I'm also going to change this. Um, I'm going to make the center of the circle 250, 250. So that means right in the middle of my screen. And I'm this is the radius of the circle, 100. So that means it's, uh, it's a circle centered right in the middle, and it's uh, 100 pixels everywhere from the center. Then here's where I use something kind of special. I don't do flip, which updates the whole screen. I only update an area of the screen. And 
here I use the rectangle that I created in line eight. So before I run this, does anyone want to guess what this should look like when I hit run and we see a window pop up? What are we going to see? A circle on a square. So uh, Derek, are you saying we're going to see a full circle and then a full square somewhere on the screen? No, a square and then a circle on top of it. OK. Uh, I, th I think I see where you're going with that. Um, does anyone else want to make a guess or say what they think we're going to see? So I think the the trick here is maybe if I do display dot flip. So we've seen flip a lot. So flip will update the whole screen. And so this shouldn't be anything interesting. We're just going to see the circle that I draw, right? So here I have my window. The only thing I do is um, create the cyan circle right in the middle of the screen. And so now what I'm doing is I'm not flipping, which means updating the whole screen. I'm openly updating a portion of the screen. And so if we run this, I'm going to rerun. You'll see what we get is this. So it's kind of like a circle on a square. Um, the thing is, the square isn't really drawn. It just looks like it because the rest of the circle is cut off. And the reason for this is because of how update works. And so what we're doing is we're, we're still drawing the whole circle that's centered at the middle, that's 100 pixels from the center at all points. But now, instead of updating the whole screen to show it to us, it's now only updating part of the screen. It's only updating the top left one fourth of the screen. And because of this, we don't see the full circle. We only see a part of it. And that's why I called this rectangle window. That's why I named it what it is. Because you can think of this rectangle as kind of your window to the screen. If you're only updating this rectangle, you only get to see what happens in that area. Anything else that happens outside of this rectangle, you don't get to see. And so for example, to show this off, if I move the rectangle around maybe, so maybe, I make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it 200 by 200. You'll see now that we see a little bit less of the circle, right? So the circle is centered somewhere right here where my mouse is. And it's like this. But now instead of seeing a whole fourth of it, our rectangle got smaller. I changed the width and the height. I decreased it. And so now what we see is only a small portion of the circle. And if I go the other way, if I change the rectangle to basically the whole screen, then update is just going to, it's basically just going to update everything because my rectangle is so big that it just covers everything that would be shown anyways. So at this point, update and flip are essentially the same thing. An alternative is if I do something like, the top left corner is 250, 250, and it's a very small rectangle, like only 10 width, 10 height. Then it almost looks like I'm drawing, or maybe that's a little bit too small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, it almost looks like I'm drawing a square. And that's just because it's like a, a optical illusion almost. We're still drawing a circle, but again, we're only updating a certain area. And so we only see this showing up. In reality, we are still drawing the circle. I, I want to make that clear. Um, if later on you update another area of the screen, then it's going to show up then. So just because it doesn't show up now doesn't mean it's actually being drawn. It just means that it hasn't been updated yet. And if at a later point you call display.flip, or if you update a larger area, it's going to show up all of a sudden. So you can use this for different effects, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah. Um, at this point, I want to see if anyone has 
questions about the homework um, that they want to talk about now, or we can always talk uh, another time as well. Anything that wasn't clear with this demonstration? I don't see anything in chat and I don't see anyone trying to unmute. So I'm gonna leave this for now. This will get posted uh, along with the rest of the code. Uh, I'm gonna switch it back to what it was at the very beginning because I think that um, looks the most interesting and we see the most of it. All right, so um, I do wanna cover a little bit a review before getting onto the rest of the class today. And it's actually review of not really the last two classes, but just Pygame in general. And so I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable with this code that I'm using every single time. So pretty much every single program that I've written in this class that I've shown you guys, that I've given you, has this rough template um, going on here. And so I wanna take a moment, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to try to explain to me what's going on here. Um, I'll start it off. Uh, the first two lines kind of always go together. And the first line is importing the Pygame library. And this is important because this is how we get access to all the things that we've been talking about before. And the second line, pygame.init, kind of goes along with it. It just does some setup uh, tasks before anything else goes. And it's just important. Um, it just needs to be run. So these two lines, that's why they're there, to get access to the Pygame library and to set it up for us. So can anyone tell me what the next two lines of code do? They also kind of go together. Create the screen to draw on. Yes. So these two lines um, combined kind of just create the window that we see every single time, uh, the window that pops up when we hit play. And this is pretty much the only way that we've seen to do it. Um, note that this could be combined into one line. So notice the first line is just creating a variable called size. And the second line uses it um, in this pygame.display.setMode uh, function. So we could just combine this all into one line. So like we could just move this 500, 500 into here and it would work, um, but it's just split up for clarity to make it um, less complicated. And here is where we define the dimensions of our screen and actually creating it right here. And it's uh, important to notice that this is how you get a surface object. So every time where I say we draw to a surface, we draw to a surface, this function takes in the surface. Here is our surface variable that we get. Pygame.display.setMode returns a surface to us. Then we have this while loop. Um, and here, pretty much I've usually used while true. Um, here is some code. I've also skimmed over this. We probably will get to understanding what this is um, more in depth uh, by the end of Python 3. But for now, what I can tell you guys is this is how we uh, close the screen. So if we try to look at this, we're using some sort of for loop. We're looping through some sort of thing, this pygame.events.get. And we're checking if these events have a type of pygame.quit. And really briefly, this is the event that's triggered when you hit the X in the um, top right. So when I hit this X, it sends this event that's pygame.quit. And that's what um, stops our whole program. So if I actually, for example, if I say pass, I, oh, that's not the right program to run. Let me run this one. Here, notice, when I hit the X, I'm clicking right now. And you can maybe see the color change to show that I'm clicking, but the window is not closing. 
And that's just because we don't do anything when we get this event anymore. So if I get rid of what I had before, which is what closes the program, I can't really get rid of this window anymore. Um, don't worry, you're not stuck. You can always stop it by hitting this red stop button in PyCharm. Um, so it is not something uh, irreversible, but that's really what this code is doing, the for loop. And I think this is the most uh, weird part of the code that I've given, but hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So notice now when I've put it back, the X actually closes the window. All right, so here is the time thing that we covered in, I think, the second class. Um, does anyone different who hasn't said anything yet want to tell me what this line of code does? Pygame.time.clock.tick20. Really, I want to know what, what does this 20 mean? Like, it's a number, but what does this number mean, represent in Pygame? I know you have your hand raised, Derek, but I'm going to see if uh, other people are willing to answer. Um, maybe, uh, Evan, do you know what this line is doing? This line of code right here. It's, t it's telling them how long to wait to update the, the screen. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So this controls how often really this loop runs. And so when we say 20 here, we're saying run this 20 times a second. Or more precisely, don't run this more often than 20 times a second. If you have something in this loop that takes a really long time to run, for example, if you have a command in here that just says, wait for five seconds, then it's going to break. What this does is it prevents it from being less uh, faster than you want it to. It can't prevent it from being too slow. Um, that you just have to speed up your code. Um, but this prevents the loop from running too fast. And we've seen this um, when we did like fill the screen with random colors. We didn't want to fill the screen really quickly or else it just looks really bad. It, it, you can't really see anything. And so we slow down how fast it updates. Uh, with this command right here. And so this 20 says 20 times a second. If I change it to one, it means one time a second. If I do 100, it means 100 times a second. And so a smaller number means slower. And finally, we have this pygame.display.flip. Um, we did just cover this, but maybe Alex, can you tell me what this line of code does? I think for the, but like maybe I'm pretty sure it's the finishing code to like, uh, up to actually make sure to, uh, I think update the whole screen. Exactly right. Exactly right. So this is the code that updates our screen, um, specifically the screen that we created right here, and so again, uh, in most of the code examples that I've provided, I did flip because I just wanted to update everything. Um, we just did talk about uh, an alternative update, which only updates a portion of the screen. Um, but that's really the code provided here. This is what it does. So this is why it's our template. It's really basic. It just creates a screen and constantly updates it. And uh, whatever we want to do, we just add it to this uh, base code. And so now um, I want to kind of walk through a demo. Uh, I don't have a lot of slides for this, but I just want to walk through a demonstration of using the drawing tools that we've already seen in kind of a new way. And what that new way is, is essentially animation or just moving, changing images. So pretty much everything that we've drawn so far is just static. It, we draw it and it just sits there, uh, which is pretty cool. But I think what's cooler is if we can draw something that moves around on the screen, right? And the reason why everything that we've drawn is static so far is we've, well, there's two reasons. One, if you notice, um, 
in my solutions, I've been drawing everything outside of the loop. Um, so it's only drawn once. It, it's drawn when we start everything up and it just stays there forever. However, even if we move this into the loop, um, it, we're not gonna see any kind of movement. Um, does anyone wanna tell me why that is? Like if I move this into the loop, uh, I claim that the code is gonna work exactly the same way, or at least it's gonna look exactly the same way. Why is that? Maybe Esther, can you tell me why um, if I move this into a loop, and so that means I'm just doing this again and again and again, um, why don't we see anything like changing on the screen? No problem, Esther. Um, Derek, do you want to say? Because if you do the same thing a bunch of times, it will just be in the same place again and again, so nothing will change. Exactly. So here, for example, the, the main thing I'm drawing here is the circle, right? And so if we look at this command, we're drawing it onto the screen, we're using the color cyan, and here is where we're drawing it, the center and the radius. And so if we do this, a hundred times, a million times, we're, we're just drawing the same circle again and again and again. And so if you put it into the loop, yeah, it'll do this a bunch of times, but every single time it does it the exact same way. So essentially what's going on is it's just drawing the same thing on top of itself again and again and again. And so you're not going to see any kind of movement. You're not going to see any kind of change. And so that just brings me to the point of if you want something moving on the screen, there's two things that you need. One, you need to put it in a loop, or so it, uh, it does it over and over, but you also need something to change uh, as it's going in the loop. Because if it's inside the loop, but the values are fixed, then that's completely useless still, because it's just gonna draw the same thing uh, and you're not gonna get the movement that you want. So uh, the demo that I wanna do, um, is really to draw kind of a rectangle that's just bouncing back and forth on the screen. And if, depending on the time, we'll see how much we can expand it. But this is gonna be very similar to the bouncing um, beach ball example that we've seen before. Um, kind of, I think on the first or second day when I was just showing off what Pygame is. So the first thing I wanna do maybe is just to draw a rectangle. Uh, I'm gonna start, with code that's not quite gonna work and we're gonna modify it until it does exactly what we want. So uh, I'm just gonna write some uh, helper code. First, I'm gonna define a color. So I'm gonna say red equals pygame.color, oops, capital C. And red is just 255, zero, zero. And so I'm just doing this so I don't have to type out 255, zero, zero. Uh, over and over again. I can just use the variable. And I'm just going to create uh, a rectangle. I'm just going to draw a rectangle on my screen. So um, I'm going to say pygame.draw.rect. And every single draw command needs a surface, so screen. It needs a color, so I'm going to use the red. And then for the rectangle, I have to give it four points. I have to give it the starting uh, top left, and I need uh, a width and a height. So maybe my starting point can be, um, I don't know, 50 in the X, and I'm gonna make it in the towards the middle of the screen, so 250 for Y, and the width is gonna be 10, and the height is gonna be 10. Okay. And so if we take this and run it, we see, a very small rectangle. Maybe I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Um, so maybe something like 50, 50. Hopefully that's easier to see. So there we go. A pretty big square uh, because the width and the height are the same. And it's just sitting there on the screen right now. And so this is what we've uh, hopefully are familiar with at this point. And so here's where I want to start moving it. 
And so to start us off, I want to move this rectangle, have it slide across to the right. So I want the rectangle to start here and then just slowly move across the screen. And so to do this, um, I'm gonna first do one thing to help us. I'm gonna say um, the rectangle X coordinate, I'm gonna make that a variable. And so initially it's 50, right? So initially it's 50 and I'm just gonna put that here. So notice, uh, or right, X. So notice I've changed my number to a variable. And you might guess that I'm going to want to update this variable uh, later on. But here, I'm drawing the rectangle. And instead of using a fixed value, I'm using a variable. And the second thing is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it into the loop. So maybe right here. So uh, it's all this code is what we've seen before. I'm making sure it only updates 20 times a second. I'm drawing the rectangle, and I'm flipping the screen. So at this point. I'm going to run it, and you're going to be disappointed to see that it looks exactly the same as before. So that's just because we're missing one step still. And so can anyone help me with the step that I'm missing? Why is this not moving right now? Why is the square just sitting where it is at the start? So maybe, David, do you have an idea of why the square is just in the same place all the time? Um, are you changing anything? You're exactly right. We're not changing anything right now. And so that's why it's staying still. And maybe, David, then uh, what do we want to change if we want it to move across to the right um could you do like rack x plus one or what right yeah 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 uh, it's exactly that pretty much so we want to update this rect x variable and so we want to do it inside the loop because it we want to update it again and again and again and again right and so um the only thing that's slightly different is that we don't want to do rect x uh, plus one. We need to store this back into our same variable. We need to update it. So we need a little bit extra rect x equals rect x plus one. Um, alternatively, uh, another way, a shortcut, I'm going to put it in comments, rect x plus equals one. And so again, this plus equals operator, this is back in Python one. Um, this is our increment uh, operator, essentially. It adds and then stores. So these two lines do exactly the same code. And for example, something like this, these two are the exact same as well. So um, this line of code is basically saying, take this variable, add five to it, and then put it back into the same variable. So it increments it by five. And so if we run this, we're going to start to see something new. But I think I'm just going to make it one for now. We're going to cl very clearly start to see something that we don't want. And so if we just look at it for a second, we see movement, which is exciting. But something is wrong here. Um, maybe Wen Tian. Um, can you tell me what's wrong right now? We want the square to be moving to the right, but it's not quite what we want right now. It's a little bit off. What's wrong? Um, I kind of don't know. All right, so um, I guess I'll tell you what's going on and maybe you can help me think about how to fix it. So, um, we want the square to be moving across to the right of the screen. And it's kind of doing that, but it's leaving behind kind of a trail, right? So we can see all the previous squares still. And so can you think of a way of 
maybe how to fix that. We only want to see the most up to date. Uh, um, maybe you maybe make like the pi game thing like delete all of the previous squares. Yeah, so that's that's exactly the right idea. Um, maybe, uh, Derek, do you want to tell me like concretely how we want to do that? Like, move the other part of the square. Oh, okay. So. I hear what you're saying. Um, so that's not quite right. And the reason for this is because, uh, let me actually do something that maybe will um, show something interesting. So if I'm not gonna use red all the time, I'm gonna use a random color. So um, to do that, let me just define it here. I need to import random. Uh, random dot rand int from zero to 255. And I want three of these. So this is my random color. And instead of using red here, I'm gonna use a random color. And for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna move it a little bit faster. You can see this, right? So this maybe it looks a little bit more clear of what's going on. And I know David, you had your hand raised earlier. Do you wanna, maybe provide a solution of what we can do to fix this problem? Um, I'm actually not sure now. Could, no problem. Um, go back to the code. Yeah. And it's, it's a little bit longer now because I have this random color here. Um, but that's just to show that if we look at the screen, it's not that our rectangle is getting stretched in any way. The rectangle is still a square. It's always a square. The problem is the previous um, rec rectangles or squares or whatever you want to call them are being left behind. And uh, Wen Tian did uh, tell us we want to get rid of these old rectangles somehow. We want to get delete them. Um, the thing is, we're not actually going to like delete delete them. It's not like we have an object that we're going to delete. But there's another way of doing it. And so I think I'm just going to reveal how to do it uh, because it's once you see it, it's going to make a lot of sense, hopefully. But um, it is kind of a new way of thinking uh, at first. And so the way we delete these um, squares, so to say, is to just draw a new background on top of them. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to refill the screen with black before we draw the square again. And so that way, what's going to happen is we draw the square. And then the next time the loop runs, we fill the whole screen with black. That means we get rid of everything. And then we move the square and redraw it. And so it looks like it kind of moved over. And that way, since we filled the screen in with black in the middle, we don't see the previous square. Because when we fill, we draw on top of all the old stuff. We kind of just cover it up. And so really, the idea here is that we're not like deleting things. We're just covering them up. We're going to um, hide them underneath something else. And so what we're going to do is, first, I'm going to move this back to uh, just being red, so I don't have this really long piece of code. Uh, but I will keep it around if I need it later. Um, but what we're going to do right before drawing the rectangle is just um, the screen dot fill. And here, I'm going to define another color. So I'm not going to define red. I'm going to define black. And that's going to be 0, 0, 0. So black is nothing, essentially. No red, no blue, no green. Um, that's just the color black. And so I'm going to fill the screen in with black. And so if we run this again now, hopefully we'll see. Now is kind of what we wanted. Right. So now it actually looks like the square is moving across the screen. And the reason why we don't see the old rectangles anymore is just because we're filling in the whole screen with black every single time. And so that means everything that we've drawn beforehand gets kind of deleted. And so um, 
for example, I'm going to make this really slow, or actually, that's not that slow. I'm going to make it five. So maybe we can see it. And so you still can't see the screen being drawn black, but this hopefully gets you an idea of what we're doing here. We have a square and it's just like moving across the screen. We're increasing the X value little by little. Right? And that's this uh, plus five right here. So again, a lot of things that we did. We drew our rectangle and that's, that's the old stuff. We know how to draw rectangles. The new stuff is that now the rectangle that we're drawing is not fixed. It's, it's changing because we changed this variable. Instead of using a number here, we're using a variable. So we, that allows us to change it. We want to increase the variable every time the loop so it's different. And to get rid of all the old stuff, we fill in the screen. So we get what looks like movement. So again, all of this is kind of illusion. Right, it's not actually smoothly move, uh, moving across the screen. It's kind of being choppy, but it looks smooth because we're updating it really fast. So, for example, if I update it at sixty, then this looks a lot smoother. Like you can't see the jumping anymore, and that's just because it's updating really, really fast. Um, there is one last problem that I maybe want to fix though, and that's moving across the screen uh, or losing our rectangle, right? It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, but it just slides across the end of the screen. It just goes off forever. But what I want is maybe my square to bounce back and forth. So once it hits the edge, it will move backwards again. And so um, I'll provide some hints for this. Uh, but I also do want some help from you guys. So the first thing is, how do we move backwards? I think that's the easier question. Um, maybe does anyone want to, okay, Derek, I see you have your hand raised. How do we move our square backwards? Decrease it by one. Exactly. Decrease so, that. yeah. So if I change this plus x, uh, plus one to minus one, we're not going to see much right now, but you'll see our square is now moving to the left. And that's just because we're move, changing the x value less and less and less, which means we're moving to the left. And so that's how we move to the left, very similar to moving to the right, which is plus versus minus. The little bit harder question is, um, well, there's two questions that we have to still solve. How do we know when to change direction? And how do we, actually change the direction in the sense that it's it's we know that we want to change the plus to a minus but we can't just manually do plus one or minus one right here um we need some other way of controlling that so we need a way of controlling it and an, one way of knowing when to switch um david i see you have your hand raised um do you want to provide an answer to one of those or you have a question. We do like a true or false and an if statement. Sure. So that's a great suggestion. That's one way we can do it. So uh, up at the top, at the very beginning, I'm going to create a, a Boolean variable. And so I think this is what you're going for. Um, I'm actually going to make a Boolean variable like um, go left or go right, since initially we're going right. So go right is going to be set to true. And so if this is true, we're moving our square to the right. If it's false, we're going to move it to the left. And so in here, we say if this variable, go right, we want to say the x plus 1. Else, if this variable is false, then we want to go to the left. Right. So we do almost the exact same thing, except instead of plus one, we're doing minus one. And so if we run this now, uh, first of all, I'm going to change the starting position to be closer to the, to the middle so we get to see better left and right. So right now, it's going to the right. And for now, I'm still going to do this manually. If I change this true to a false and save and run, we're going to see now it moves to the left. 
So we have some way of controlling the direction now. We have this variable, this true or false. If it's true, we go to the right. If it's false, we go to the left. And so now the last question is, and I think the trickiest uh, question is, how do we decide when to change this variable? How do we know when to decide if we are true or if we're false? Uh, Dick, you have your hand raised. When x value is 500, change it to true, and then wait, no, false, and then when it's when the x value is zero, change it to true. All right, so I you you're hitting it on the spot. Uh, we might have to modify a little bit, but I'm gonna do exactly what you said. So if the rectangle, if the x coordinate is uh, did you say is 500 or uh, what do you want here? Equals, greater than, less than, what do you want? Equals 500. So if the x value is equal to 500, that then what do we want to do? Set the go right to false. Exactly. Because if the x value is 500, that's essentially the edge of the screen. And so if it's at the right edge, we want to start going left now. So we want to set this variable to false. And then we want to do something exactly the same for the left edge of the screen. So if rect x is equal to 0, I'm going to just do this for you. Go right equals true. Right. So if the x value is at the left, we're going to start going to the right now because we've hit the edge and we want to go the other way. And so I'm going to make this run a little bit faster. And I'm going to run it. and there's kind of two very um, unclear, two very subtle problems right here. So I think we, we see one already, but um, the left edge is perfectly great. It, it looks uh, amazing, right? The right edge, though, there's something a little bit off, right? It's still going off the edge of the screen. Uh, sure, Alex. Um, so rect x is just a variable and it's just essentially the starting position of our rectangle. So here I just say it's 250, which means that it's kind of uh, in the middle and we're using it in our draw command. We're using it as our x coordinate of our rectangle. And I think this goes into kind of the problem that we're having right here. So again, the left edge is fine, the right edge, not so much. And so a hint of why this might be is because of how this rectangle is being drawn. You have to remember what this rect x value is. This is the x coordinate of the top left corner of this rectangle. So if I, uh, it's like the x coordinate of this corner right here, the le top left corner. And so maybe that helps us to realize why the left edge is fine but the right edge is not. And so um, the left edge is fine because when the x coordinate, the top left corner is zero, that means the left edge of the square is touching the left edge of the screen because the rect x is exactly the coordinate of the left edge. However, we're only bouncing when this top left corner reaches the right edge of the screen as well. But that's not exactly what we want. We want it to bounce when the right corner is touching the right edge. That way, it doesn't go off the screen. And so uh, Dirk provided one solution that we can do. And I like that for now. So we're just going to change this value. And so Dirk said 450. Really quickly, Dirk, can you explain why 450? Why did you choose 450? Because the width is 50, so so you have to do it 50 like things less so it's 500 minus 450 which i mean 50 which is 450 exactly so it's depending on the width of our rectangle um maybe i'm gonna try to draw this out on paint i don't have my tablet with me so you're gonna have to bear with me but if we just draw our screen really quick our screen is just some sort of rectangle. It's a square, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and then we draw the square that we're moving around. Right. And let me just fill this in with some 
red color. And what we're doing here is we're taking this square and we're moving it to the left. And then we bounce and we want it to move to the right until it hits the right edge of the screen and then it bounces again and then goes like that forever. And so the thing I wanted you guys to remember and what we uh, recall is that when we have this variable, this rect x variable, it's really this corner or it's the x value of this corner that we're um, storing. That's what this variable tells us. And so if we do this kind of fake animation again, we want it to bounce the left edge when this x value is zero, because that's when the left corner hits the left edge. However, we don't want to bounce when the left corner is at 500, because that looks something like this, right? This is when rect x equals 500, and we're already off the edge of the screen. We want to do it earlier. We want to do it when the right corner is touching the edge of the screen, right? And so what is this value? Well, it's 500, this edge, minus however wide this square is, right? And so that's why we have 450 here, 500 minus 50. Um, notice when I'm drawing this square, it's a 50 by 50. If I purposely mess this up, for example, I want to make my rectangle a little bit wider. I want to make my rectangle actually a rectangle and not a square. And I make it twice as wide. You're going to see it kind of breaks again. So um, you're going to go off the edge a little bit and then bounce back. And that's just because the value that we wanted, the 450 or whatever, is supposed to be the size of the screen minus the width. And so if I change the width, I have to change that number as well. And this is just a side note I want to make uh, kind of important. It's good to have variables instead of hard-coded values. And the reason for this is, um, well, this is important when values are dependent on other values. And that's because if you update one and you're using hard-coded values like we are right now, you're going to have to update the other value as well. But if you're using variables, like I'm going to show now, you don't have that same problem. So if at the top I define variable called like width, and I set that to 50. I'm saying my uh, rectangle has width, width. And here, instead of 450, I'm going to do 500 minus width. And this way, if we have it as it was before, it works normally with this square. And I'm just going to wait till it bounces. You can see it works normally. But even if I have it like a really weird looking rectangle, a really wide one, it's still going to work. And that's because now I have it as a variable. If I update this one variable, it updates in a bunch of different places. So now you can see, even if I make my rectangle really wide, it's still bouncing correctly. Um, there's one last thing, one last problem. It's very, very um, hard to see. So I don't blame anyone for not seeing it. But um, to make it happen, I'm going to do something like this. Uh, instead of plus one, I'm going to do something like plus 1.3 or something, or minus 1.3. I think this is a show. Yep. So do you see our code broke? Our rectangle just slides off the edge of the screen. Right. And yeah, so I see question mark in chat. Does anyone want to maybe guess why this is happening? What it, it was working perfectly fine before. It was bouncing off the left edge and then bouncing off the right edge. But now it just slides off. Um, Derek, you have your hand raised? Is it that like one point three isn't like go into five hundred? Yeah, it's it's related to like divisibility and stuff. But yeah, it, exactly. So, um, I think with one point three, it's a little bit hard to see. But I'm gonna go back to this drawing right here. So imagine 
that our square is bouncing around and at some point it reaches like really close to the edge but not quite at the edge and so maybe the x coordinate here is something really small it's like um maybe uh, we'll say it's two for now right it's two and so the next step we're going to the left so we subtract by 1.3 2 minus 1.3 is 0. 0.7 so it's a little bit closer to the edge still not touching it yet and then what happens with the next step the next step it's currently at the the x value is currently at 0. 0.7 we do minus 1.3 that gives us a negative value right it skipped past zero completely right it went from 0. 0.7 to minus 0. 0.6 and so if we look at the code that controls our bouncing right here we can see a problem here it only checks if the x coordinate is exactly some number but we don't want exactly some number we want some sort of like um cushion for us it's not just if the rectangle x coordinate is zero it's also if it's anything negative right if it somehow went past the edge and went into the negative we still want it to bounce right we still want it to bounce even if it's negative um and same thing for here we don't want it to bounce right when it's 500 minus the width we want it to bounce if it somehow some way gets a little bit past it we still want it to bounce to the left right so instead of equalities we're going to do inequalities so i'm going to do something like this if the rectangle x is greater than or equal to this value this special value then I'm gonna bounce. If it's less than or equal to zero, I'm gonna bounce. And so this um, will fix the problem that we have because we have some sort of like cushion built in. If it somehow skips past exactly zero, it will still bounce the next time because it will, if it skips past zero, it'll go into the negatives. And then it says, oh, you're negative. I'm gonna uh, change that variable to true. And the same thing with the other end. Um, I'll notice that if I kept one of them as concrete, yeah, if I kept this as 500, um, the left edge works because we have the inequality now, but the right edge still won't work. It'll still just fly off the edge of the screen. So we, we really need these inequalities. Even if we're in a case where it doesn't matter. So before, when this was just one, it didn't really matter if we had exactly or these inequalities, but you never know when someone is gonna change your code, change anything values. You don't want it just breaking randomly. So it's better always to be safe and use greater than and less than even when you know it shouldn't um, skip past these values. You never know what will change in the future. So always be safe, better safe than sorry. So this is pretty much everything I wanted to cover about like movement such animations. Um, I showed this example with just a square, uh, with just a rectangle, but you can imagine going on to do similar types of ideas for maybe different shapes or even lines, right? If you change the endpoints for your line segment, it will change how it's drawn as well. So you can animate a line as well. Um, Really, the principles I want to focus here are that if you want some sort of animation, you need to put it in the loop so it goes again and again and again. And you need some sort of value that's changing. Here, it's the x coordinate that I'm changing. Um, you can also imagine, maybe I'll actually do this as the homework. So I will post this code um, up on Classroom, up on the GitHub. I'll give you this. And I want you to expand it, essentially do the exact same thing I did for the x value, but I also want you to do it for the y value. So I don't want it just bouncing back and forth. I want it to be bouncing left and right, but also up and down. So essentially what you're gonna do is copy the same code, or yeah, you're just gonna copy the same code that we did to modify rect x. And you're gonna do something like, you're gonna make a rect y value and then you're going to change this fixed value to a variable. You're going to have to figure out how to modify it, 
how to handle the flipping. You're going to have to do something very similar to here. 500 minus the width. It's going to be something related to the height this time because we're dealing with y values. And um, yeah, also remember that down means positive, right? So if you want to move down, y is going to get larger and larger and larger. And so that's another trick. But otherwise, it's pretty much going to be follow along what we did right here. And so that will hopefully uh, make you a little bit more comfortable with drawing and with the loop and Pi game in general. So, and that's going to be the homework, just expanding this so it bounces up and down as well. Um, does anyone have any questions about this demo right here? Um, anything that wasn't clear? I'm happy that uh, pretty much everyone was able to answer something and I feel good about that. Yeah, so just a couple of notes that I want to make about this program uh, before I give it to you. Um, remember, I, I made a point of like doing this using a variable here instead of just like 50. Um, it wasn't something necessary, but it's something that makes your life a little bit easier. But notice I'm still hard coding a lot of values, like maybe zero is fine. Uh, because zero, it's all the left edge is always going to be zero. But here I have a hard coded value 500. This value should be the same as this value right here. And so maybe it would be a good idea to make a variable like screen width equals 500, and then change this to screen width, change this 500 to screen width. And so the idea here is that instead of putting 500 in two different places, I replace them with a variable and just define the variable in one line right here. And so this way, if I wanted to make my screen maybe smaller, or I can't make it that small, but then um, change it like this. If I make my screen a little bit narrower, it still works. Things like that. So you can always go more and more with defining variables instead of hard coding values. You do have to draw the line at some point. Um, maybe you want to change all the values into variables, or maybe there's just some of them that are um, important and others that are, yeah, they're hard coded, but they're probably not going to change. So it doesn't really matter. It's really up to you to decide. Um, but that's just a general programming tip that I wanted to make sure is said for this thing. But otherwise, if I don't have any other questions, um, that's pretty much all I think I'm going to cover today. Um, didn't have time to get more into sound, which is fine. We're going to cover that next week. And yeah, so homework is just going to expand this. And we'll meet again next week in class. If you don't have any questions for me, um, you're free to go. Otherwise, I'll be sticking around to answer any questions that you may have.